So before I start, I think there will be a consensus here that any statistics of a number of women being raped in any country would be too many. But we live in a large population and with that reality comes many staggering statistics and responsibility. As of 2015, according to National Crime Records Bureau, every day 95 women were raped. That is, 95 women today, yesterday and tomorrow. This is the horrible average that exists in our country. Now, by the time I am done giving this talk, chances are another woman has been raped. I was 12 years old when an advancement took place. I did not even know what rape meant back then. My mom used to take me to these nearby rallies. As a woman, this incident was very dear to her. She wanted me to see the world and its problems from a broader perspective. Like most kids, I used to play a lot of video games, like a lot. And she didn't want me to take everything for granted. And to my surprise, this one incident didn't change my perspective and shaped the many goals and efforts that I will be focusing on in the next few years. While the incident was horrific, it also had an effect of bringing out so many people who demanded a change. So I went home, took the challenge and tried to come up with some rough sketches, product ideas and their implementation. Some of them turned out to be very, very impractical and some of them were overly simplified. I kind of saw this process like a game. I thought rape was this level 19 boss that you would face in Dark Souls. Kind of lame, right? Well, I was definitely a weird kid back then. So I went home to do the challenge and I, I kind of came up with this concept called Electro Shoe after much trial and error. And uh, I explained this uh, concept to my best friend Abhishek, a uh, fantastic guy. He was there with me since day one. So we started working on this. I am telling you, we absolutely had no sense in fashion of what, what women wanted in a footwear. And if you actually take a look at this thing, you would all agree that, you would all agree that we absolutely had no idea. I mean, if you actually, I mean, would anyone of you here actually wear this thing and go out? I sure hope not, because cops would actually burst you out at thinking that it's a time bomb. But yeah, but we understood physics and we understood that something had to be done. So what followed was an education in electronics, embedded systems aided by internet, Red Bull and couple of sleepless nights. We felt like we were these lone warriors who are trying to solve this problem rape. Again, I know it's lame, but hey, sometimes you need to be the hero of your own story to get the work done. So, we, t I, I, we tried learning as much knowledge as we can about embedded systems, electronics, from internet and various resources. And I used to spam random people on LinkedIn and Facebook whenever my code didn't work out. I'm kind of shameless in this way and it's also something that I would encourage others here who are interested in affecting a change. Never be ashamed of what you do not know or what you cannot do. Oh God. Be shameless in your pursuit of knowledge and resources. Know, the, know that there are people out there who might not be personally motivated to help you out, but they can be actuated by your enthusiasm. So the guy who helped us was uh, Joseph Solomon. So the guy who helped us was Joseph Solomon. He helped us understand some of the core concepts between why it happens in an X method instead of Y method and where to implement it. Now I would be lying if I told you that I never got frustrated. We had to start from the very fundamentals, such as piezoelectric effect. How does it work? Does it create enough charge? If not, what can we do to make it produce more charge? So after working on this, uh, this guy Joseph Solomon, he, he made us show that we get these fundamentals right. And after much run error, we were able to execute this electro shoe. So I thought that the next step would be to actually let people know about this amazing journey I went through explaining this uh, thing. I would be lying if I told you that I never got frustrated, but that never stopped us. Paradoxically, I can tell you with the hindsight that failures mirror on the right track. If your product is not failing, then you are probably not testing it hard enough. So by that definition, we were actually talking this thing up. Our prototype failed 17 times miserably. I got electrocuted twice while working on it. My friend Abhishek even developed a nosebleed at one point. His brother had to rush all the way to my house and pick him up. 
but these failures and setbacks actually helped us forge some of the interesting innovations, best memories and adventures we had together. Honestly, the time I spent working on this was a total bliss for me. I was thinking, learning, researching, it was just very, very educational. So, the one obstacle we could not breach was our board examination. And uh, our parents laid down the law that we had to pause the lecture show for a while and concentrate on our boards. So, as soon as, as soon as the boards were done, I jumped back into my work. Recognizing that there were some clear limitations to what we could do technically, I felt like the next step would be to let people know about this amazing thing we created. And I, I emailed Better India and I wrote a year story blog about this uh, journey we've gone through. I wanted to let everyone know that uh, the process we've gone through inventing this thing. And to my surprise, when I woke up next day, I had over 12 missed calls from random strangers. And suddenly I phone rang again. I answered. Hey Siddharth, read your story man. Totally love your work. Blank. And again, my phone rang again. With this, this time it was from a recognizable number. That was from a friend who informed that it was in a local newspaper. So now while all of this might actually seem cool, I panicked. It was too much exploring in one single day. Now throughout my life I've never been this social. And suddenly everyone's eyes were on me. So I quickly deleted the US story blog. But it was already too late. People started copying my story and pasting it on their own websites and magazines. Then people started messaging that when is the product going to come out, uh, when I, what are they planning next, and all that other stuff. I recognized that I needed to get back to my work and focus on that. And what actually happened was, after I actually hit that thing, uh, on that particular instant, I realized that uh, I was letting people down. I started to develop this huge anxiety because I already visited a couple of incubators and discussed some of the major flaws about my shoe, such as getting necessary rights, making it water resistant. I understood that turning an invention to a business is a whole different thing. And suddenly, the people whom I knew from the very beginning, my best friends, started to hate me. The friends whom I shared the 12 hour road trips with, the friends whom I did some crazy attitude stuff, started to despise me. This one single exposure just killed our years of friendship. I felt so alone. I couldn't even explain the situation to anyone. And uh, the people whom I never met in my life indirectly raised bars at me with all these high expectations. Every day the shade phone started to skyrocket. 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 shares every week. And my inbox just kept piling up with people's gratification. I don't know what to do at the time. So ironically, the people whom I met on social media were the ones who actually heard me. I emailed my education counselor, Prab Singh, at 2 a.m. in the morning. Pranis Saha, again, someone whom I met on social media, got me focused on other stuff that I wanted to work on. He made sure that I don't get well into fear of being judged. And we both later ended up creating this uh, amazing uh, simple skin, skin cancer detection tool. And uh, honestly, in these critical situations, you really need someone to help you get focused on the track and uh, do what you want to do. Sometimes you already know the answer, but you will never accept it until you hear it from someone whom you can relate to on a very personal level. I also realize that you will get hate no matter what you do. It is just another hurdle telling you that you are on the right path. But at the same time, you need to wait for the right people to acknowledge you for the right reasons and able to push your work forward. And uh, trust me, we are probably living in the most interesting uh, period in the history of the earth. We are on the verge of artificial intelligence, cryptocurrencies, blockchain technology. I mean, just think about what kind of wonderful life wonderful era we are living in. Allow your failure to pursue even further. Now, I am not saying that I have mastered this skill, but I am 100% confident that this is the right path. Try to acquire a work ethic that would power you through insecurities and self doubt Find a common ground that supports your skills and pursue it with so much dedication that saying no to you should be impossible. Make the most out of your lucky position and really think about how you can contribute to the community. 
and as cheesy and pleased as it may sound, never give up. The world needs you more than ever. Thank you very much.